Hello and welcome to Real Estate in Fort Wayne and Northeastern Indiana. We've been talking about the purchase agreement and how to write it. Last week we did a cursory review of just the different items on the contract and now we're going to go into some detail. A purchase agreement actually can be negotiated three different times. You have the purchase agreement itself with its terms and conditions. You have inspections that might need to be negotiated and then when the appraisal is done, if it comes in low, it would have to be negotiated. But let's start with the purchase agreement. We talked about putting the buyer's name, the property address, then we get into what stays with the property. And there's a whole litany of items that are attached that would stay, but we put in like if the range oven is going to stay a refrigerator. Now, these are personal property items. One thing you don't want to put in is the swing set stays, um, a lawnmower stays, or something like that, because the lender is going to make you remove that from the property. So those things need to be negotiated outside of the contract. Then we get down to the price. The home has to appraise for the purchase value. If not, it has to be negotiated, and the seller either takes less or the buyer comes up with more money. Normally the buyer doesn't have more money, so the seller usually has to take less if it does not appraise. If it's an FHA appraisal, that appraisal remains on file for six months. So if you would sell the house, put it back on the market, and sell it again, that same low appraisal would be used for a six-month period. Then we get into earnest money. Earnest money is like good faith money. I, in good faith, or I earnestly wish to purchase your property, and you put in an amount. Now, what happens if it doesn't go through and you need to get out of the contract? The earnest money, if it's a legitimate excuse, would go back to the buyer. However, what happens if the buyer breaches the contract or the seller breaches the contract? There is an addendum that we use called the Alternative Dispute Resolution Addendum that we attach to the contract that shows as long as it's, uh, the amount in controversy isn't over $3,500, what each party is entitled to. So we'll talk more next week on the different aspects and we'll talk about like the methods of payment, closing costs, and those type of items. And we'll see you next week at Real Estate in Fort Wayne and Northeastern Indiana.